I can't say uh, uh, beautiful Nairobi because uh, look at this cloud. Man. Woo. <laughs> As long as it's not gonna kill you, it's gonna make you what? Stronger. Still, man, love this market, man. Nairobi is uh, by far the most dynamic, I believe, um, and innovative um, market uh, in East Africa, especially when you talk about uh, innovation. Uh, there's so much quick innovation. I had a meeting at, uh, I had a chance to visit Safaricom, couldn't take pictures, but I had a chance to visit Safaricom uh, uh, building and um, just massive, man. Massive, massive building. Never seen such a big... Even MTN Nigeria was not as big as Safarika. Their, their offices is like a campus. It's crazy. Uh, and their structure, but uh, maybe I'll do another video about why Safaricom dominates or is the most innovative telecom company in Africa. But I, I was having a conversation with um, a young entrepreneur uh, yesterday um, about how do we compete how do we compete as uh, as entrepreneur and innovator as in in Africa I'm not I'm not even talking about globally I'm talking about as African entrepreneur in Africa how do we compete uh, in this global market man how, how can we differentiate ourselves and, and 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 try to make our our mark on a, on the continent on our own continent you know we live in a global economy and and we see some of the top innovation um you know in education in health being dominated by the west and asia also doing a lot of innovation on on on, on different aspects on research and development but how how can we compete and the conversation, of course, for me, I still believe we can compete. Um, the entrepreneur, uh, the person I was talking to, didn't believe so. He said uh, there's no way we can believe we can compete with with outside uh, technology. I actually believe, um, as African entrepreneur, we can, we can compete. We can compete, but we have to compete in a smart way. Now, one thing I've learned and I've seen so many times, you know, uh, yes, we can compete in how much money we can raise compared to other companies, especially Western companies coming to do business in Africa. We can't. We're not going to be able right now to raise 20, 30, 40 million just like that. But that's, that shouldn't scare us. We shouldn't fear that because money alone is not going to give them access uh, uh, to the market, you know, they have to understand the culture. They have to understand the mindset and the people, you know, we as local, we know those, uh, we understand the culture, the concept, the, the, the mindset and all those things. So we have an edge and, and a lot of time, a lot of those companies make a lot of mistakes. One of the biggest mistakes those companies making is they want to control the whole value chain and they spend all this money hiring a bunch of people. Uh, uh, trying to control the whole value chain and they burn through cash and it's very difficult for them to build a sustainable business and believe me when I tell you number one a lot of time when somebody or a company or an entity have to cons consistently raise money at some point that money will dry up you know the economy is gonna slow down that the crash some crash is gonna happen investors not gonna keep dumping money to those companies you know, and then they have to reach KPIs. So instead of focusing on how much money we can raise, yes, you need to raise some money, but you need to look at also uh, finding innovative business model. And that's the aspect of, of, of young entrepreneur 
uh, African entrepreneur are not doing. They, they're focusing on today instead of tomorrow, you know? So, um, and I was having a great conversation with a, a young man trying to, he, he does a training, uh, uh, he has a training uh, uh, company. And uh, his job is uh, to train employees for, for SMEs, uh, which is a tough business, by the way, because most SMEs in Africa, as he was telling me, are not investing in their employees. Uh, you know, it's uh, sometimes they don't have the money. Uh, sometimes they're scared that if they invest in that employee, that employee is going to leave and that's going to be a bad investment for them. They're going to keep having to pay for training. Most of the companies that pay for training and, and invest in their employees are usually big companies. We haven't seen uh, uh, SME uh, um, companies or not that much. At least I haven't seen any uh, myself because it, 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 it's still not cost effective for them. But, uh, but besides that, I was telling him, you know, how do you do your business? You know, so the way he does business, he has to find, he, he's a one man show, just like most entrepreneur. And he has to look at companies and, and search for companies and negotiate and all those things. But you, it's very hard to scale up when you're a one man show. And it's very hard to hire your people when you don't have income yet. So it's a tough business. Um, but and I was asking him why are you not looking into digitizing your training, looking at virtual uh, uh, technology, and uh, his answer was you know funding, like most entrepreneurs, and it's true it's expensive. You have to digitize, you have to do this, but you know, uh, but you need to number one. That's for you young entrepreneurs. Number one, you want to win the game of entrepreneurship. You need to separate yourself from your competition. You need to bring a, an additional value to your client that nobody else is doing. If you're doing what everybody else is doing, why that company should go to you instead of uh, someone else? Number one, and you know how entrepreneur, I mean, businesses uh, operate in Africa. It's about connection. You know, I don't care. Well, I don't care if, if, if you're doing the same thing with everybody else. The one who's going to win is the one who's the most connected, uh, point blank. The one who has uh, uh, insight on that company has someone he knows inside that company that can facilitate him or her to get the contract. But if you separate yourself from the competition, if you bring something uh, with an added value, uh, like digitization of your training program or, um, or virtual reality training, something they've never seen before, something that can bring even more value, something that will allow you to scale up now with virtual reality. And it's new, yes. Um, do you have to, to, to um, convince and, and maybe offer that services at a much lower price in the beginning? Yes. You know, that's what you have to do. You have to win customers. You know, that's the name of the game, winning customers. You lose in the beginning to win in the long run. Entrepreneurship is a long-term game. I always tell people. And unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, people are not, don't want to develop those long-term game vision because they're looking at it as a short-term. I have to live, I have to survive. Yes, you have to live, you have to survive, but it doesn't hurt you to do both of them. You know, you have your short-term goal, whatever you're using now that's paying the bills, sure, but invest in the future. You know, you know the ecosystem, you know, you know the, 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 the game plan. And if you can't do it yourself, find a partner. You know, there's a lot of uh, 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 technology out there that are looking for partnership in Africa, in Asia, in, in other countries. But, sorry about that, but we, we 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 sabotaging ourselves, you know. We telling ourselves that it can't be done because I don't have the resources. I don't have this. I don't have that. You are already telling your mind that it's not possible, and it is possible, man. I always tell people all the time: if I was able to do it, anybody can. It just take time, and time. That's all you got. You time and use it wisely. Of course, not sit down and just, you know turning your your thumb and trying to figure out what to do no but but you need to invest in the long term separate yourself from your competition
you know, and stop worrying about all those companies that are raising a ton of money. Uh, and and it can it can be scary, but it's not the only way out. So that that's pretty much what I wanted to do, man. You know, if if we stop believing that uh, um, I can't win in this game because some other players came in with big time money, then we're not gonna make it. We're just not gonna make it. You just gotta find a way to beat them. You know, uh, on the strategy and the business model that they're not using. And as young entrepreneur, stop thinking today's or tomorrow, thinking five, 10 years from now, what kind of program can I develop? What kind of technology can I incorporate on my value chain that will separate me from my competition? That's the key, guys. If you're not playing that game, don't play the entre entrepreneurship game at all. You know, just get a job, man, because that's the only way you're gonna win.